Hello everyone, I am Dr. Neeraj and today I am going to discuss with you the applications of recombinant DNA technology. So let's start the video. So before going into the application, we should know that uh, what is recombinant DNA technology. So in simple word, recombinant DNA technology is a technique in which we just recombine the two different DNA molecules or different DNA segments with each other. And this now this recombinant DNA molecule, it may be transferred into host cell and it allowed to replicate. So by using this recombinant DNA technology, we can simply isolate a gene from an organism or from any source and now transfer this gene into another host by using certain vectors. And this gene can be allowed to express inside the host cell if we use the expression vector. So by you can say by expressing the gene of interest, we can make certain compounds or we can make the certain characters inside the host cells of which will be the applications of this recombinant DNA technology. So these are the some applications of RDT like the production of pharmaceutical products, production of recombinant vaccines, gene therapy, transgenic animals and plants and gene cloning, production of some microbial products. So let's discuss these applications in detail. First application is the production of pharmaceutical products. Means we can make the some pharmaceutical products inside the host if we transfer the genes of that product and if the gene of the particular product isolated and now it is incorporated into the expression vector. The expression vector is that vector which allow your gene to express or you can say in simple word which allow your gene to make the protein of interest. So if we incorporate the gene of interest into the expression vector and if this recombinant DNA molecule is transferred into host cell, so in the host cell it will make that protein and from the host cell we can simply purify or isolate the that produce protein. So there are many examples like insulin, growth hormone, blood quality factor they can be produced by using this recombinant DNA technology. Here for example we are taking the example of insulin. Insulin is a protein which is generally required for the you can say metabolism of glucose in which the glucose is just taken inside the cell with the help of this insulin. If insulin is not there then there will be the amount of glucose will increase in the blood which ultimately cause a disease which is known as the diabetes. So we can produce this insulin which can be given to the diabetic persons then for the insulin production what we did first we obtain the human insulin gene means we just take or we just isolate the human insulin gene after that this gene will now be incorporated or now be joined into the expression vector so as i previously told expression vector is that vector which contain all the elements which are required for the expression of your gene so this expression vector it ultimately express your gene to make the protein. So in the second step we just join the insulin gene with the expression vector. In the next step this recombinant DNA means which now contain the insulin gene and the expression vector it is now transferred into the host. In case of insulin production we transfer it into the bacteria. So inside the bacterial cell in the next step we have to select out that bacteria which contain this recombinant DNA molecule and after the selection means once we select the DNA uh, sorry once we select that bacteria which contain this recombinant DNA so which when after that we allow the culturing of that specific bacteria and from the culture we can ultimately purify the insulin from the bacterial cell. So this is one of the application of recombinant DNA technology that is the production of pharmaceutical product for example insulin. Now the next step is the production of recombinant vaccines. So vaccines you all know are these preparations which gives us immunity against the disease. So in the vaccines we simply just take the you can say in some kind of vaccines like killed vaccine or attenuated vaccine we just take the pathogen. But in case of recombinant vaccines, we take the gene for that particular protein which is causing the disease. So that gene is isolated and incorporated into the expression vector or in like in some kind, sometimes in case of uh, virus, we just incorporate them into the harmless 
वायरस नाउ दिस न्यू रिकम्बिनेट वायरस इट कैन बी यूज एज अ रिकम्बिनेट वैक्सीन सो दिस इज ऑल्सो द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ रिकम्बिनेट डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी द थर्ड एप्लीकेशन इज अ ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ जेनेटिक डिजीज मीन्स जीन थेरेपी जेनेटिक डिजीज आर दोज डिजीज विच आर ड्यू टू द डेफिशेंसी और यू कैन से इनएक्टिवेशन ऑफ सम जीन्स मीन्स वेन वन वेन द सम जीन्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन सम पार्टिकुलर मेटाबोलिज्म and if these genes they are deactivated or they are these are absent so due to their deficiency certain disease will develop so that disease known as genetic disease because they are due to the genes so by using gene therapy we can treat these disease so in the gene therapy what we did we just take the gene from some other source which is required like for here example we can take the example of hemophilia a and b hemophilia it is a disorder in which the blood do not clot and this is due to the absence of factor 8 and 9 which is involved in the blood clotting so the patient which have hemophilia in that patient the factor 8 at 9 is not there or you can say the gene for the factor 8 at 9 is not working so for the treatment of that patient we simply isolate the gene for that factor 8 and 9 from some other source like here we take an example from donated blood then after isolating the genes we now join these genes with expression vector because we have to express these genes in order to make the factor 8 and 9 in next step now this recombinant dna molecule which contain the genes for factor 8 and 9 and the expression vector so now this recombinant dna is transferred into bacteria in order to multiply then after transformation into bacteria now we have to select that bacteria which contain our recombinant dna or which contain the correct piece of dna and after selection that bacteria is allowed to grow and we can now purify from our factor 8 and 9 from this bacterial cell and now this purified factor 8 and 9 it can be used to treat the hemophilia so this is the example of Uh, gene therapy so rdt is also you can say it also uh, involved in the treatment of genetic diseases the next application is production of transgenic animals transgenic animals are those animals which have foreign genes so by using recombinant dna technology we can insert our genes into the animals to make them transgenics and these transgenic animals they can be used for different purposes like transgenic mice the mice which contain the foreign gene so it can be used as a model system for treatment of various human genetic diseases similarly transgenic goat the goat which contain the foreign gene in case of goat we generally uh, you can say we generally introduce the genes into their milk for some uh, pharmaceutical products or for you can say for increase of protein content in their milk and similarly the transgenic cow so we can also make the transgenic cow by transferring genes into them and here the example we can take we can uh, transfer the gene for the casein proteins so the cows which have the genes for casein protein they produce 13% more milk proteins so by recombinant dna technology we can make the transgenic animals which have their different applications next application of rdt is the transgenic plants so similarly like animals we can also transfer our genes into the plants and we can make many product within the plant so this is also the application of transgenic plant so for, uh, for example bt cotton so bt cotton is a crop it is a crop of cotton in which the genes from a bacterium that is bacillus thuringiensis has been introduced or transferred these genes they provide resistance against the insect so the bt cotton crop was insect resistance crop so what the scientists did they just isolate the some genes that are the cry genes from the bacteria bacillus thuringiensis and introduce these genes into the cotton crop so when the pest or insect they feed on the cotton so they died because these genes which were taken from the bacillus thuringiensis they produce a kind of toxin which is known as bt toxins so once this toxin is just you can say enter inside the insect body so insect died so in that way this bt cotton is a insect resistance crop similarly the next example is the flavor saver tomato what is this generally the tomato they have very short shelf life so from the field to your freezer so they have to travel a journey in which they first from the field 
they come to the market now you come to uh, you goes to the market and purchase these tomatoes and bring that tomato to your home but this process it requires time and as we know the tomato they have a short shelf life so when you bring that tomatoes to your home so they you can say they rotten very quickly because they have short shelf life so in order to increase the life of tomatoes what the researchers did they just recognize the mechanism by which tomato get ripen so what they find that there is an enzyme which is polygalactosuronase which is required or which is involved in the ripening of tomato so what the researcher did they transfer the gene for a protein which interfere or which inhibit the production of this enzyme polygalactosuronase so as the polygalactosuronase will not be there or there will be interference in the production of this enzyme so the ripening process is ultimately slows down which gives the time for the customer that the tomatoes now will you can say they will not rotten so quickly so that tomato in which the gene or you can say the antisense gene for that enzyme polygalactosuronase has been introduced they known as the flavor saver tomato and they have the property that they do not rotten quickly because this enzyme polygalactosuronase it involved in the ripening now these tomato they have the gene which is inhibiting or which is interfering with this enzyme so as a result of this these tomatoes they are not uh, rotten up very quickly so this is also the example of transgenic plants next the next example in same in the transgenic plants is golden rice so what is the golden rice it is a variety of a rice which have vitamin a content in them means generally vita uh, these rice they are deficient in vitamin a but what the researchers did they just take the genes which are required in the uh, you can say which are required for the formation of vitamin a these genes are incorporated into the rice plant so now the rice they have all the genes which are required for the vitamin a so they now synthesizing vitamin a in their edible parts so as we consume these uh, rice so we can ultimately we can say we are also consuming the vitamin a and why the name golden rice because their color is golden as compared to the normal rice which is of a white color so the golden rice it have the gene for a vitamin a precursor that is beta carotene so what genes so generally three genes were incorporated into the golden rice first is the psy gene which code for the enzyme phytoin synthase second gene is the crt1 gene which code for the enzyme phytoin desaturase and the carotene desaturase and next is the beta lyc gene which code for the enzyme lycopene beta cyclase so these three enzymes they are required in the synthesis of vitamin a so all these genes which code for these three enzymes they are incorporated into golden rice so now this golden rice is rich in vitamin a next is the increased production of microbial products we all know that <clears throat> microbes they form many products like they form alcohols they may form citric acid so by using recombinant dna technology we can increase their production level like here we take the example of citric acid so citric acid is made uh, by aspergillus niger and there is an enzyme which is required in its production is the citric acid synthetase what we did by this rdt technique we you can say we transfer the gene for this citric acid synthetase enzyme and now this gene it produce the more amount or high level of this enzyme so now if the level of enzyme is high so ultimately the citric acid production will also be high so by using this we can increase the production of microbial products like for example i am uh, taking only one example of citric acid but there are many example so simply we just uh, uh, take the genes which are you can say which are over producing or which produce that particular enzyme in a very much high amount so these genes are transferred into the microbes now the microbes they also produce the microbial product in high amount so by using rdt we can also increase the microbial product the level of or production of microbial product 
and next is the gene cloning so as you know what we are doing that by using this recombinant dna technology we are making many copies of our single gene or single dna fragment means we are just taking dna and incorporating into the vector and transfer into the host cell now as the host cell replicator make many copies of itself so our dna is also replicate along with the host cell and make many copies of itself so what we are doing ultimately we are making the many copies of our single dna fragment so that's why we can also say that by using this recombinant dna technique we can perform the zine cloning or which is also known as the dna cloning so these were some applications of recombinant dna technology so that's all for today guys see you in the next video